What's going on everybody, my name is Andrew and today I want to talk to you about the N5 form, what it is and how we go about using it. So an N5 form is a form that you as a landlord will serve your tenants when you want to terminate the tenancy for one of the following reasons. You're either going to be serving it because the tenant or the tenant's guest is interfering with a reasonable enjoyment of other tenants at the property, or the tenant is causing some kind of damage to the property that you will want to substantiate and have them correct. Or the third reason would be that they are in some fashion or form overcrowding. Now, as you can tell from the reasons that we just gave, this form is actually a pretty versatile form and it can be used for a relatively broad array of reasons relative to the other N forms at our disposal. But but as is with the other informs, you want to make sure that you are serving it for the right reasons and not just doing something just because you think this is the way to go. So let's start off by talking about reason number one, which is having to do with the reasonable enjoyment of the tenant at the property. Now, this term is something that people tend to struggle with a lot. And by that, I'm talking about reasonable enjoyment. So what does reasonable enjoyment mean? Now, there is a long-standing landlord and tenant common law principle known as quiet enjoyment, which basically places the duty onto the landlord to provide the tenant with and not to interfere with peaceful, undisturbed, and dignified possession of the premises, which of course can only be interrupted by necessary interruptions for maintenance and safety concerns. Now those three terms do in fact give quite a bit of guidance as to what should be understood by quiet enjoyment. And while the exact phrase of quiet enjoyment has been since dropped and replaced in legislation, it is effectively preserved and codified under the newer term, reasonable enjoyment. And as far as reasonable things go and how this would extend further too, is interfering with any obvious lawful rights and privileges that extend to things like your own personal safety or theft of personal property, this would also fall under reason one. But now even with this understanding, I think it is important to accept that no matter how it is that we cut this, reasonable will ultimately be interpreted by an adjudicator as these things are more often situational and sometimes a little subjective. So keep this in mind when approaching. Now the second reason that we're gonna talk about here is property damage. And we shouldn't need to explain too much as it pertains to property damage, but you may need to be a little more concerned with how you're going to be going about proving the property damage or substantiating your claims when you do eventually take it to the tribunal. Now I have personally found this to be extremely difficult because it sometimes requires filing a police report, other times you need to get some testimony from another person, and the only time it's really worked out for us is really when we had everything caught on camera and even then presenting it at the tribunal felt like we we're on the Jerry Springer show. And ultimately when you file for reason number two, your only real option is asking the tenant to either correct the damage or pay for the damage, which really is not going to leave you with a hell of a lot of any practical recourse. But now we're going to move on to reason number three. Here is where we're going to need to talk a little bit about overcrowding and what is overcrowding. Now I want you to know that you cannot just arbitrarily tell someone that there are too many people in here. Every city will have its own bylaw defining the standards for occupancy and what is effectively overcrowding. For example, if we're talking about the bylaw in Toronto, you cannot exceed one person per room for each nine square meters. So what this ultimately means though, is that if you receive a bylaw complaint or violation notice from either the city or the fire department for something to do with overcrowding, and you can definitely use the N5 form to file against your tenant using this order and hopefully have the matter corrected. So now that we've covered reasons, we should now talk about setting the right expectations. And I think the biggest question that most landlords are gonna have is will the N5 actually get me an eviction? And the short answer is probably not, at least not on the first go. It is important to note that in Ontario at least, the disposition of the LTB is not to displace people from their homes and they try to give people a chance to work things out. So if you're expecting an eviction, attending the first filing of the N5 with the board, you are unlikely to get this unless they simply just don't attend. And this is of course also assuming that you filled out the N5 correctly. You see, usually what happens is this. The board is going to give the tenant a chance to correct the issue within a few days. And if they don't, you can apply to the board thereafter for an eviction. But when the board wants to give the tenant a chance, they're going to give them a chance relative to how reasonable or significant or problematic the violation or the complaint that you're filing for is. And this is of course also assuming that your reasons are significant enough to merit an eviction. And remember, your understanding of reasonable, significant, or substantial may be considerably different from that of another person, especially an adjudicator. So keep that in mind when you're pursuing. Something to generally keep in mind here is that if you're expecting an adjudicator to effectively kick someone else out of their home, there needs to be a damn good reason for them to be doing so. So if you're filing an N5 for frivolous reasons, don't have the wrong expectation. So now that we have a general understanding of how and why we use it, let's talk quickly about how to fill up the form and make sure that you're doing things correctly. So first off, 
when you're filling out the form, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to fill out your name correctly and your tenant's name correctly. Make sure that it matches all government ID and it should match and be corresponding to your lease agreement. And if there is more than one tenant on the lease, make sure to put all the names on the lease. And when you get to the address section, make sure to include the address along with the unit number. Otherwise down the road, that's gonna cause you some problems. Now it's important to understand that the N5 is actually a two-stage form, which means that you have to effectively serve it twice to the tenant, allowing them for the correction period. The first time you serve an N5 to the tenant is for them to correct. And then the second time that you serve them is because they have failed to comply and you are now serving them that form in conjunction with your application to the landlord and tenant board. So let's look at filing and the termination date. If this is your first time serving an N5 within the last six months, the termination date must be at least 20 days after the date of service. However, if this is your second N5, your termination date must be at least 14 days after the date of service. Don't forget to add an extra five days to each of these if you are serving this by mail. The next thing we're going to do is select the reason by which you're serving the N5. As we've already discussed, these reasons just make sure that you're selecting the correct option that best applies to your specific situation and follow the instructions in kind. And the next important section that we're going to fill out is the details of the events portion. This is where we're going to document the events that transpired and any effort that you have made to work with the tenant to correct the issue. And of course, make sure that anything that you put in this section can be further substantiated when you attend the hearing as it is going to be otherwise be easy to have your case dismissed if you don't have things properly documented. And finally, we're gonna finish the form off with all of your personal info there at the end. Now, the overarching process is actually not that complicated. Basically, you're gonna serve your first N5 with the reasons that you have selected, then you're gonna serve your second N5 on the eighth day, and then you're going to be subsequently filing with the LTB using an L2. And remember, you're gonna to have to pay a $201 filing fee to the board and you also need to use a certificate of service. So make sure to cover all these bases. After that, you basically attend your hearing, hope the adjudicator agrees with you and your reasoning and there will likely be an order to the tenant to comply if they do agree with you. And then after that, if the tenant breaks the order to comply, they're basically going to be allowing you to apply to the board for an eviction. That's basically it in a nutshell, how to use an M5 form. If you have any questions regarding LTB forms or how we go about handling our rental properties, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you. And of course, we're going to leave some information about us in the description below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.